Hey guys, we are talking recursive and explicit formulas today. Now, I'm gonna assume you are familiar with these. If that is not the case, I'm gonna link a video in the corner for you to check out. Or if as, if as I'm going through, you're like, oh crap, I need a refresher on that, that video would be for you as well. But we have been given a recursive formula and we want to find the explicit formula. So remember, these formulas have to do with sequences. They help you find more numbers in the sequence. For recursive formulas, you have to know the number before a number in a sequence to know the next one. With an explicit formula, they're awesome because you can just be like, I want to know the hundredth term, plug it in and figure out what it is. So like in math, there's always, well, usually more than one way to do things. So I'm going to do it one way. If you like a different way, power to you. But what we're going to do is we are going to figure out the first few terms in this sequence using our recursive formula. Okay. So we are just told straight up a sub one or the first number in my sequence is nine. So I already have one of the numbers in my sequence, but how do I find the next one? Well, that is what the recursive formula is for. The recursive formula tells me whatever you number you want to find a sub n take the number before it right so if i want to know the fifth term i would need to know the fourth term and then add six to it so what this formula is telling me is take the number before and add six and if you're like how did you get that from that again that video i linked would probably be for you or as you do these more and more, you're going to get used to that. So to find the next term, I'm going to add 6, which would give me 15. I'm going to add 6 again. Sorry, I want to write that down. It's going to help us in a minute. Add 6 again. I'm going to get 21. And then add 6 again. And I'm going to get 27. And I'm going to write a dot, 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 meaning it doesn't stop there. It keeps going, right? So now... How do I figure out the explicit formula? Well, I'm going to show you the formula, but we're going to talk about it as we do it so that we're not just memorizing things, which I mean, can be done. It's just not as good usually, <laughs> but Hey, I'm not going to judge if you just memorize. So with this information we now have, I have the first four numbers in my sequence. We are going to figure out our explicit formula. So, Whatever number we want to find, you take the first number in your sequence, 9, right? A sub 1. And then what did we do each time? What's the common difference? Well, we added 6, right? We added 6, but how many times? Well, you'll notice to get the fourth term, how many times did I add 6? I added it three times, right? To get the third term, I added six twice. So one less than whatever place we want. That is where the n minus one comes in. n minus one. So if I wanted to know the hundredth term, I would need to add six 99 times, n minus one, okay? All right, that is our explicit formula, that's it. But some teachers probably want you to simplify it down, get rid of those parentheses, okay? If that's the case, we're going to do that real quickly. Distribute those in. So I end up with a sub n equals 9 plus 6n minus 6. And then I'm going to end up with 6n plus 3. Awesome. Awesome. Now you can always check yourself by plugging in and make sure you get the right number in your sequence. All right, let's look at this second one. So I already know my first term is 25. Now, because we've already done it, we may not need to do as many steps as before. Okay. Cause when I look at this, I can tell whatever number I want to find, Take the one before it and subtract four. So I'm subtracting four each time in this sequence. So, I mean, I can figure it out if I wanted to. The next number would be 21, then 17, then 13. Okay. And I could keep figuring that out. 
So what is the explicit formula for this? Whatever number we want to find, take the first term, 25, a sub 1. And in this case, we are subtracting 4. But how many times? One less time than whatever place you want to find, right? n minus 1. Look at that. Okay, and then we'll simplify it in case that is what your teacher or you prefer. So we end up with a sub n equals 25 minus 4n plus 4. And we continue to simplify down and get negative 4n plus 29. And then I'm going to go ahead and check on this one to show you what that looks like. So if we want to check ourselves, make sure we did this right. One way we can do that is let's figure out what would our fifth term be. If I subtract 4 again, I am going to get 9, right? So let's make sure when I plug into this equation, that's what I get. So I am looking for the fifth spot, n equals 5. So a sub 5 equals negative 4 times n, which we, oh, not 9, guys. <laughs> we are plugging in 5 <laughs> plus 29. So a sub 5 equals negative 4 times 5 is negative 20 plus 29. And guys, what's negative 20 plus 29? <gasps> That's 9. Yay. So I'm feeling pretty confident. I found the fifth number by using my equation. So I'm feeling pretty confident that I could find the 500th term if I wanted to, or the 90th term just by plugging in that number 4n. All right, I hope this made sense. I will link a whole playlist with lots more videos for you if you need it. Thanks.